So it's been a long time since I've done an update. Uh, part of the problem was that uh, my computer died. I was doing a firmware update and uh, something happened, it failed and just completely bricked my device. So that was a good thing because it was a pretty crappy computer and was barely able to run Microsoft uh, Flight Sim 2020. I've just been working on building a new rig this big uh, big computer right here behind me, I built this uh, last week with the help of Jason over at Flight Sim Broadcast Network. Uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, definitely go check him out, show him some support. Um, he was super nice and had an extra uh, PC case and a power supply that he gave me to help uh, save a couple bucks on the computer build. So anyway, I got this new machine up and running. I got Microsoft Flight Sim uh, 2024 up and running on it. And it's doing uh, pretty good, pretty sweet, sweet machine. Big upgrade from where I came from. Update for today, I've just been playing around with a Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, I just have a, a little button and a rotary encoder on here. And I've just been testing this out with a little uh, custom console application I've been playing around with. So I've got a little application going as I was playing around with this that I just wanted to show you, uh, just kind of a quick progress update. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let me get to that. All right, so here we've got Microsoft Flight Simulator up and running, I'm paused at the moment. Um, and then on the right side, I've just got some code here. I'm just gonna launch this guy. So you can see right now, I got this little console app running. Um, it's gonna check for um, mobile flight to make sure that the mobile flight WebAssembly module is running. So little backstory here. I was trying to create my own WebAssembly module that will run in the simulator, and then I can have another application that connects to that um, and can kind of send data back and forth to my own console application that then can talk to this Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, and turns out it was really difficult to do. And I also noticed that a lot of people online were kind of do, trying to do similar things and it was pretty difficult for a lot of people. And I got thinking, well, if everybody's trying to create a WebAssembly module that they can have electronic devices communicate with, we're gonna have people with these sims that are gonna have all this software running in the, in the process and uh, just didn't seem like a good, good situation to be in. And then I thought, you know what? Mobile Flight's open source. Let me go poke around in their code, see what they're doing. Maybe I can you know, learn some things from that. And as I was looking around, I was like, you know what? I, I already have Mobile Flight installed. I got their WebAssembly module in there. It's running. It works. I noticed that in their code, they support multiple clients hitting it. So I could have Mobile Flight hitting their WebAssembly module running in the simulator. I could have my own applications uh, hitting that WebAssembly module that Mobile Flight created. So I figured, hey, why not? I might as well just use that. Take advantage of it. It's already there. It's community driven, supported. It's got a lot of... Uh, um, they've had a lot of community support. It's running on so many machines. It's stable. It works well. Might as well just take advantage of that. So that's my plan. So I started um, kind of writing this little console application to do that. And you can see right here when this program first loads, it's going to check and see if the sim's available. If not, it's just going to wait until the simulator is online. And then once it is, it checks to see if we've got the mobile flight web assembly module loaded and um, we do, so it connects to that. Then it looks for a USB device. Um, in my case, it's kind of coded to a, a Raspberry Pi device. Once it sees that, it will try and connect to it. Once I get the serial number back, I know I'm running my custom code on this Raspberry Pi device. And so now, now the, um, the console application here is looking for inputs from the device. I've got a little a little push button here. I can push it, and when I do, the console says, "Hey, I received a button press. I'm going to send this command to Mobile Flight, which is going to hit the Direct to um, button on my uh, uh, G1000. And then I've also got a rotary encoder. So if I twist it once, you can see." We sent some data to the console application to the computer that says encoder incremented one. And you can see we, we can send this, um, this code to mobile flight. 
to their WebAssembly module, and it'll take care of it from there. Don't worry about this dummy command. Um, for some reason, I have to send this dummy command after every command. Otherwise, it tends to ignore the next command. Um, so that's something with my setup with MobileFlight. I haven't quite figured that one out, but uh, it works as long as I send the dummy command. So I'll just keep sending dummy commands. Then also I can rotate the encoder counterclockwise. And then here you can see we got encoder minus one. And then here's our code we're sending in mobile flight. I can also push the button on the, uh, on the encoder. And you can see what we're doing here is we're grabbing the aircraft's current heading and then we're setting the heading bug to it. So pushing the encoder, it's gonna set our heading bug. It's gonna sync it to our current aircraft heading. And then we can rotate it to move that heading bug. And then this other push button will just uh, toggle or push the uh, G1000 direct to button. So let's check it out. You can see what I've been doing here. And let me um, slide this window over just a little bit. We'll be able to keep seeing the commands. And let's get into the sim here. So I just want to show you this real quick. So I can, I can do anything. Let's look at the the heading bug here. Oh, I don't have this running. Let me start it up. So let me get mobile flight running here. The web assembly module is running and listening uh, inside the sim, but now mobile flight, I got to get it running for this physical device here. Let's go ahead and update all this. All right. Mobile flight is now running, so my G1000, the hardware here, should be working so I can twist the heading knob. You can see that's changing. Let's zoom in here a little bit so you can see it. So if you look at the heading knob on the G1000, that's working. The heading knob, whoop, where are we going? The heading knob in the simulator on my screen, also working, okay. So let's zoom out some more again. Okay, there's the simulator. Here's my G1000. Okay, so here's my Raspberry Pi Pico. If I hit this button, it should send a command to our console that the button was pressed and then it's gonna open the Direct2. And you can see here in the sim, we got Direct2. Down here on the hardware, same thing. I can also just push the book direct to button here to dismiss it. You can see that's updating both places. So if I hit the button again here, boom, there it goes. That's pretty sweet. So now the other thing I can do, let's, let's get rid of that, uh, there we go. The other thing I can do here is I can rotate my encoder. So if I do this, no, you guys can't see uh, everything here. So if I rotate this, you can see the heading bug is moving. We're also logging all the heading. Uh, we're logging all the, the input. All right, so you can see as I rotate this, our console application's logging it out. You can see our heading bug in the simulator's moving. So I'm going clockwise here, if I go counterclockwise, anti-clockwise for you guys across the pond. You can see our heading bugs updating, and then if I press the button, it will sync it with our aircraft heading. So yeah, that's all That's all this was. Quick update just to show you kind of progress. I just wanted to make sure that I could, I could at least validate that I can take a device, communicate to the computer, to the flight sim, and make some updates. Um, so that, that way I could base uh, a new um, circuit board around like a Raspberry Pi microcontroller or something like that. So the, the Raspberry Pi microcontroller looked intriguing to me. Um, number one, it's a relatively inexpensive chip. Uh, the RP2040, which was the first version of the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller, um, will, is guaranteed to be in production until 2036. The new one that just came out uh, like last month or something became available is guaranteed to be in production until 2040. So the chips are low cost. They'll be in production for a very long time. So I don't have to worry about <laughs> all the hassles that I've had with the uh, Arduino Mega. 
Also, the Arduino Mega, somebody commented and said they were available again, and yeah, they were. They probably still are. I haven't looked recently, but I did notice that the price on those went up uh, a few few more, few dollars from what they used to be. They used to be like $14 about, a little over $14, and they're now over $17 per chip. So <laughs> they're hard to get, and they're really expensive compared to um, the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller. So the first version, they're about 70 cents per chip. That's, I mean, 14, 17 bucks versus 70 cents. That's a huge difference. And then the new one that just came out is about a dollar 20 per chip. So it's quite a significant difference. Um, obviously it doesn't have enough GPIO available to handle all the inputs on a G1000, but with some IO expanders or multiplexers or something like that, I was actually looking at the, the microchip IO expanders, which, which are easy to use and really convenient. Um, with those IO expanders on the, on the chip, it can, you can easily, easily make this work. So I started laying out the schematic around a Raspberry Pi um, 2350 chip, which is the new one that just came out like a month ago. Uh, it's now available. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna lay out a schematic around that. Anyway, I'll keep you updated. I'll post some updates as I have them uh, for now. I just gotta get the circuit board laid out and then I can you know, get some more prototype PCBs and start uh, seeing what I can do and getting a new version, a better, hopefully a little bit cheaper version of this uh, G1000 that we can make available for other people. So until next time, we'll see ya.